this frame print, which you can see in my last or in my previous video where I thrifted it from Value Village. I think it's really cool. I'm gonna go for like a very simple color palette, like very plain, leaning towards school colors. Um, so I'm gonna stick to like metal, black and white, and anything that's just like a light, soft color. That's gonna be one. And then from another trip, I thrifted this vintage cork message bulletin board. Yeah, it's called a bulletin board. And this cost me $4 Canadian. It even has like the old sticky things inside. Who knows if those even work. But I thought this was like so cool. It's noisy and then it'll kind of match maybe the color scheme I'm working with. It's called Granite Cork Board. And I don't even know what era this is from. Like 80s or 90s or something. gonna go here so I'm gonna look for other frames that are like white or silver color I have some gold frames but I think it'll like not match the look I'm going for so well maybe it could because now I have this gold lamp but the top part I think I'm just gonna keep it simple so that's gonna be the first one and I'm just gonna go through all the frames and stuff I've been collecting and some of the artwork that I want to use. Okay guys, so it's the middle of the night and I've just been sorting all my frames. So I have them organized by color. Here I have white ones and then I have some old frames which are kind of a hot mess because they're a little bit falling apart so I might have to paint them over if I'm going to use them. Then here I have some black frames and then the gold ones go here. I kept gold and wood together because those are kind of like warm tones so those will match. And then I have this like old photo I took a few years ago so I keep that framed. I'm just gonna keep it inside because there's no point in me taking it out or changing it. I mean it matches so why not. And then I have silver ones here so for my wall here, I'm going to use only white, black, or silver because I just want to keep it like cold tones since my desk is black and I have like silver um, desk organizer stuff, so it's going to match that way. Then here I just have a pile of books I kind of have to sort and go through and put them into my inventory and things like that. So that's what I have going on here. So far I have my little letter board thing, this light photo that I took. Um, this is the print from Value Village I was talking about. And then I have this, so it's looking a little bit um, like, I don't know, it's a little bit drab. I might need to add some more pops of color. Um, maybe add some more blue or purple. I don't know, I'll work off of the colors here because they're kind of matching. It's just, there's just like a different contrast going on that's not quite there yet, so. I'll have to figure out how those will come together. So it's just like solving a big puzzle. And that's my starting point. Um, yeah, I'll leave it till tomorrow because it is kind of late and I have other things to do right now. So that's that. So maybe I'll switch out this picture and put it inside the white frame so it's not as stark. And I think that will help keep it like a little bit more muted and then maybe I'll just make it all silver and white frames because this like this has a black frame but it's like very thin so it doesn't stand out as much because this is basically like gray is the main color. Good morning. 
this so I think I'm gonna have to paint this frame because it's a little bit you can see it's a little bit messy on the sides um, I have this window cleaner I use for mirrors and things like that this dollar store paint. It's a little bit empty. That's all I have. <laughs> See, this is just a plywood frame, but when you paint over it and you leave like these brush strokes in, on, on the frame, then it makes it kind of look like it's uh, wood underneath because then it gives a texture where here you can just see it still looks fake. And this way it looks like it's wood underneath because it really could be anything after you paint it, right? You don't really see the texture, you just see the brush strokes. So I painted the outside, I just left the back as it was because no one's going to see that anyway. And that's what it looks like up close. So from far away it does look like it's just wood. I took the photo out of the other frame and I had it taped on to the back of this mat here. So I think that like look here, it fits because it was the same size frame. Well, there's a stroke of luck so it's better because this, this mat board is like um, lighter and well, you can see it on this side. This one's looking a little old, so it's good because this one's in better condition. So let me put the back thing in. I had to like go inside. There. I love this so much more because it just has like these um, swiveling little closure things that fasten and you can put it on um, a desk and then they have little framing holes here already where this style, these metal things, like they just, they can break off really easily after you fold them over like a few times. So if you want to invest in a good frame, get the ones with these swiveling things. So I think this looks much better now that I changed it to a white frame. Um, this is distracting because of this ad thing inside. So when you're looking at it, you're not going to see that black ad thing. I think I'm going to look through some old sketchbooks and find some old drawings because I can make like new art to hang into frames but I just don't have the time right now so it would be nice to pull out some of my old sketches and use those as um, to add to the collection. I think that already four is looking to be like a lot. I don't think I can really add more than like two or three frames. That's not gonna make it look cluttered. All right, so I'm gonna look for my sketches now. So I found this water fountain sketch I made from like 15 years ago and I think it looks really nice. I like that there's like a water element in the sketch. Um, I just have to figure out where I'm going to place this, so maybe I'm going to do this, or something like that. I think it still needs some kind of color. Maybe it'll just be easier if I just like take this out, so then I can actually see what it's like. Guys, this plastic from back in the day, it's like so strong. It's like I need scissors. Okay.
how I do came with magnets. I guess I like stick it on and I stick something magnetic on. I don't know how to use this. Okay, but this is the old sticky strips it came with. It does still have some stickiness to it, so I might use these. There's four. Like, I can't imagine why that wouldn't be strong enough. Um, I'll leave this little sticker on there. Alright, so how does it look now? Yeah, now it's a lot more easier to visualize. I don't know, it still feels like it needs like one more frame or color or something. So I have this 19th century style gift wrap. It comes from like this book. I have like another two books like this. I actually just like found these for free but um, I use them as my photo backdrops for taking photos of my books that you can see in my store. Excuse me, I have to sneeze. I, yeah, I didn't think I was gonna go with like this floral pink color, but I do think it does bring out some warmth because I, now I think it's starting to look a little bit too cold. So I have like a project idea for this. This is easy. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. This is like a poster size frame from probably Ikea. I don't know I'm not like obsessed with it but I don't hate it and it's not too distracting for me like it's neutral enough that it's not distracting but then it's also like not boring um, I hope that makes sense once I put it up maybe you'll like see the vibe a little bit better um, this is just a starting point so I'm gonna clear my desk now and to nail all the stuff and yeah I'm gonna eyeball it because I'm not one of those people like I, it's just too complicated I see people doing like cut out squares and all this other stuff to do that like no I'm I eyeball a lot of things so it's just gonna go straight on the wall like these really small ones so they don't go too deep in the wall okay and then I'll build around that so that's how it's coming together I know this color scheme is a little bit strange then I'm gonna do the other two and then I have like this random hook here still so I might just take that out or hang something else off of it like a necklace or beads or something, I don't know. So now it's starting to look more together. So I'm gonna give these a try that it came with a pack.
so far it's staying on. I'm gonna have to use some like double-sided tape to make them look even. Um, yeah, this is not centered. I'm probably gonna have to redo this. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I like, I love hate it. I tried it, you know, it's probably gonna change with time. It's an experiment and I'm ready for something different. Okay, so I moved it. It looks a little bit better. Like, look at this mess I made. I'm gonna keep this one here because I don't really use this corner side of the desk for anything. It'll just sit out of the way and store everything I need. I don't know what else to put there, but I think it works. Just have to slide it over. Like, hello, why aren't you? Why isn't gravity working for you? so scary I almost broke okay oh you can't even see that I just don't think the wall is straight at this point but that's as balanced and level as I'm gonna get it right now from Dollarama and I found this strange little item this is kombucha not so strange but this is 
What is strange is that this is actually looks like it's a Dollarama specific product because look, they put the label on it and it's two dollars. The ingredients, they're handcrafted, fermented, organic, it says it's all the good stuff. And of course sugar, which is nothing unusual. This is a rose flavor and then it says it's agricultural European something certified so I'm gonna give this a try and see if it's any good I hope it's good because two dollars probably the cheapest kombucha you can find in the city because if you go to grocery store it's like four dollars sometimes like three to five dollars around that price carrying it so Okay, it's not bad. It tastes like kombucha should taste. I'm not a connoisseur of what it should taste like, but it does taste sweet. It does taste like every other kombucha I pretty much tried. Um, the rose flavor, I don't know about that. It's almost like a rose essence. I don't really taste it as strongly as in other products I've tried, rose flavored things or rose extract things or but it's okay. Like it just this flavor I know there was another flavor, it's like a ginger and it had some other weird ingredient in it. But this just tastes like kombucha and the sugary version of that. Um the rose flavor is not so strong, it just tastes like sparkling kombucha, which is fine to me. I'll take it, you know, Dollarama is trying, anytime they want to put out anything that's remotely healthy, I support that because we need more affordable, so somewhat healthy food out there, so I give them an A for effort, um, maybe I'll give this like a 7. You know, it's not the best kombucha I've tried, but for the price, um, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty good option. I'm going on a run to the grocery store, and I'm just about to make myself a coffee so I can drink that on the way. And this is basically what I wear almost every other day. It's this denim jacket that I cut off, or it's like a shirt or something, I don't know, it's from France and it has these cute vintage buttons and details, and basically these, um, what is it called, velour, uh, vel I, don't, I don't know what it's called, this particular velour, let's say it's that. I don't think the black matches, I could have worn a different color underneath, but too late, I'm just gonna throw it on and get going. I'm making instant coffee with some supplement and there's condensed milk in there. I don't have time to make a fresh pot so I'm just going to go with instant for now. You gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, normally I don't leave a spoon in like that but you know I'm holding a camera down the elevator because I forgot to take one thing with me and that's my phone so that was weird okay I'm not gonna film the part at the grocery store because you guys kind of know what it looks like you can watch my other grocery store videos to see what's around Toronto but for now I'm just in a rush so I'm not gonna film that part it's like over the afternoon, I'm back from the grocery store and this is my breakfast. It's skirt with some, what is this, uh, jam. This is like a plain skirt, so I just added some jam for flavor because who eats plain? And I have a piece of toast with some spread. So today's a sunny day. I have really good lighting for doing photography and videos. That's a natural light. And I'm just staging this little tiny cute vase with flowers, with dried flowers. And then I'm going to use this little um, 
shelf storage unit I have here that I painted the same color as the wall and I'm going to use that for my books. Cheers to a cute little vase and then I have my Earl Grey tea here that's steeping. So the sun has set and I've lost my natural light, but here are some of the books which I've been using to film with. This is what I have and then I have like a whole other pile of books I still need to list and put in my inventory system and things like that. But basically I've lost the light so I don't really have much good lighting to work with, so until tomorrow. And for now I'm just going to be working on editing photos I took earlier for like my profile picture and then other like maybe for Instagram or something. I don't know. We'll see. But that's what I have to work with for today. So I did start a Shopify and for Shopify you really need to do your own marketing. So I have quite a few books to get through this whole shelf. It's like all books and then I have like more stacks of books I haven't even had them listed but I have about a hundred books listed in my Shopify store and um, if you're interested in purchasing a book or seeing what I have in my inventory you can go to my Shopify store link in the description and have a look there for an idea of what I'm listing if you're also a bookseller or if that's something you're interested in you can see I'm I'm mostly sticking to cookbooks, um, classic literature, like all the old school goodies, um, stuff that's easy for people to recognize, or things that are just like really weird, unique, and quirky that you can't really find anywhere else. And yeah, so cookbooks, art books, architectural weird types of little books so that's what I'm starting with and then I also have some household items like this little frame here that's also going to be listed as well